Hi everyone, um, so it's Liz from the library. I'm back with a new book this time. It's called A Blade So Black, um, and I've been wanting to read it for a really long time. It is a take on the Alice in Wonderland story, but definitely more mature, a little bit darker, more violent, uh, and uh, it also takes place in modern day Atlanta. So obviously that sounds amazing, and I haven't read it yet, so we get to read it together. Um, so let's get started. So it actually starts with a quote from Lewis Carroll. Begin at the beginning and go on till you come to the end, then stop. Prologue, Curiouser. Alice couldn't cry. She couldn't scream. All she could do was run. Her boots slapped the vinyl floor. Light flickered in the red leather. Someone shouted her name. Maybe her mother, maybe a nurse. A hurricane of rushing blood and her thrashing heart wailed in her ears. Out. She had to get out. A feeling like a hammer beating in the inside of her skull made everything fuzzy. She didn't see the white man in the middle of the hall until she was on top of him, but she couldn't stop. It was like hitting a wall. Then they both hit the ground. The smell of bleach and disinfectant coated her throat. She fought to untangle, her, untangle herself from him. Damn it, kid, hold on a second. Alice, mom's voice chased her past the lobby and through the sliding doors. Get out. Bright red letters danced in the puddles peppering the concrete. Emergency. Grady towered over her, casting a shadow across the night. Warm water misted her skin and hung in the air, a rain that wasn't really committed to falling. She raced into the street, a car swerved to avoid her, horn blaring and headlights flashing. You crazy? The driver hollered at her back. Alice had no idea where she was headed. She just ran, past parking garages and a couple shops, Squat, beige buildings lined the street. The GSU campus. She kept going. He was okay. And going. All day. He was fine. Why did he do this? And going. Why did he leave me? Her lungs kicked at her ribcage, strangled by the hollow uh, feeling clawing at her chest. Her legs pumped until the burn in her stomach rolled to her feet. When they refused to carry her any farther, she dropped to the ground. Water soaked her gloves. Dirt stained the white fabric. Uneven asphalt dug into her knees, scraping them as she crawled the last few feet to sink against a wall. Tears and snot ran down her face. Daddy. But he was gone. Dead. Poor child, someone nearby whispered, the words dragging across their tongue in a growl. So alone so afraid. Panting around hiccups, Alice shook her head, her face in her hands. Go away. Oh, I can't just leave you. Not when your fear is so inviting. Alice lifted her head to search the emptiness around her. She sat in the mouth of an alley, God knows where. Her tears made it hard to see. Snot and the stink of something sour made it hard to breathe. I can take it away. The darkness shifted with movement deeper in the alley coming toward her. Let me help you. A dog stepped out of the black. Huge paws ended with long wicked claws that clacked against the ground. Inky skin, no fur, rippled as it moved. Illuminated eyes blinked at her. One pair, then two, and three. Lips curled in a flash of fangs the size of her fingers. The trembling in Alice's gut shuddered through the rest of her. She screamed. It lunged. Teeth snapped shut just inches shy of her face. Drool that smelled like rotten meat splashed across her chest and cheek. She scrambled backward, trying to call for help. The words choked in a wail. The roughness of the brick at her back caught her clothes and scraped her skin. She was trapped. Instead of attacking again, the creature collapsed and flailed, ripping at the ground. Traitor, it shrieked. Yeah, yeah. The air quivered. Steeped in shadows, it seemed to recoil as a white boy stepped into view. He gripped the end of something sticking out of the monster's back. 
a sword, Alice realized. The thunder of her heartbeat against her skull sharpened. What little light that managed to thread the gloom hovered along the length of the blade as if afraid or unable to touch it. You will suffer. You will all suffer. Pinned to the ground, the beast thrashed. Yellow blood slid against the blade, coating the onyx metal, dripping onto the pavement beneath it. What's that? I couldn't hear you over the sound of... The boy pulled the sword free and drove it in again with a slurch. Alice jerked. So did the monster. Then it fell still. The glow in its eyes slowly faded. Stepping over the body, the boy wiped his sword clean, then slipped it into a sheath over his shoulder. As the hilt clicked into place, light poured in from the street, saturating the alley. Confused, Alice blinked against the stinging bright, trying to focus on what and who was in front of her. Wearing dark jeans, boots, and purple t-shirt with the words, we're all mad here, scrawled across the front. He looked like a regular dude with a weapon strapped to his back. She didn't realize she was staring until the beast's body jolted with a loud pop, startling her. Its leathery skin bubbled and folded, shrinking in. A smell like old milk and mold filled the air. She gagged, her stomach roiling. Oh my God, there was really a dead monster. She was gonna be sick. Unfolding his lithe frame from a crouch, the boy turned to go, though he paused as if noticing her for the first time. Blinking, he shifted to the left, then to the right, as Alice watched. You see me? He had an accent, sounded English, and I'm not going to attempt an English accent. You don't want to hear that. It took a second for Alice to realize that he was speaking to her. She nodded, her eyes darting between him and the dissolving creature. Curiouser, he tilted his head to the side and came toward her. Alice jerked back to fear cold in her limbs. Whoa, he lifted both hands and went still. I just want to make sure you're okay. He took another slower step. When Alice didn't move, she wasn't sure she could. He took a couple more, then knelt in front of her. Light from the street slid across his moss green hair and spilled into gray eyes looking her over from beneath a furrowed brow. Anything hurt? He asked. Alice stared. She couldn't manage words. Her thoughts tumbled over themselves as her mind tried to make sense of she wasn't even sure. Talking dog monsters? Some dude with a sword? He killed? What the hell just happened? She couldn't breathe. When she tried, sour air stuck in her throat. Her stomach quivered. Hey, it's okay. His quiet voice managed to fill the alley. The gray in his eyes shifted, colors catching and dancing like a kaleidoscope in the dark. Chest heaving, Alice shook her head. Blonde strands from her wig clung to her face. Her thighs stung where she'd crawled across the ground. The pounding in her head worsened, made it hard to think. She had to get up. She had to go. Dad was waiting to take her to the con. Only he wasn't. He was gone. Can you walk? Who? She couldn't get the rest of the words out. They weren't even words anymore, just small sounds on the edge of more sobs. No. She gripped her mouth with both hands, her fingers digging into her cheeks. Stop it, stop it. The ache in her jaw spread to her throat and slithered behind her eyes as she fought back tears, bottling them up to throw them away. She wouldn't break down like this, not out here, not in front of whoever this was. Hiccuping around slow breaths, she fixed the boy with a stare and pushed the question free. Who are you? Oh, good. I thought you might pass out on me. He pressed a hand to his chest. I'm Addison Hatta. He offered her the other. Bands of silver gleamed on each of his fingers. Can I help you? She watched those fingers for a long moment. When he wiggled them, her eyes shot to his face. Then the hilt of the sword peeking over his shoulder. A freaking sword. This is too much. She shook his hand. Addison stood, drawing her up as well. Her legs shook but held, though she braced uh, her free hand against the wall. Dirty water and Lord knows what else stained her gloves and her sailor, Fuku. Her costume was ruined. She'd worked so hard on it, but that didn't matter anymore. Swallowing thickly, she forced words over the sand in her throat. Thank you. 
You're welcome. He drew out the last syllable, trailing off with a lift of his eyebrows. Alice. You're welcome, Alice. A smile stretched his face, and the color of his irises shifted again, brighter now. Your eyes. She pointed, nearly poking him in one. They changed. Yeah, he rubbed at the back of his head. That happens when I come to this side of town. This side? Where are you from? Not anywhere near here. The burbling body nearby gave a loud crack. It was nearly gone. The ground stained, stained black beneath it. She aimed her fingers at that mass. What was that thing? Where did it come from? The questions leaped free on their own, her brain latching onto something, anything, to try and make sense of what she was seeing. Shifting to the side a few steps, she eyed Addison and his sword once more. The same place as me? And where the hell is that? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Addison chewed at his lower lip, watching the body before looking to Alice. He eyed her up and down, then nodded to himself. But I think I will. Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm really excited to read the rest of this. It's so good. Um, so join me next time. Bye.